Welcome back to another Universal Studios Hollywood construction update. Today, I primarily went to check out the holiday construction, but I also got to see the construction progress on Secret Life of Pets Off the Leash, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and some of their holiday decor, the Lower Lot construction, and unfortunately, Hard Rock Cafe. So Hard Rock has actually been announced that it will be closing in January. And the rumored update is that it will be replaced by the Tusum Chocolate Emporium from Orlando. Um, that will be joining NBC Sports Grill and Brew, which is going to be open next year. And uh, Antihitos, which just opened this month. You can start to see some of the holiday decor around City Walk and City Loft, but there isn't that much because holidays actually don't begin until November 28th and uh, today is November 21st. So there, there's still about a week left for them to add some stuff. Now, I do want to say that I was able to go to City Walk last week and see some of the holiday merchandise, but also get to try Vivo Italian Kitchen, which is here on the left-hand side. Now, this is a great low-cost option for Italian food in the resort and uh, I can absolutely recommend it. Great food. Um, so towards Vivo Italian Kitchen, kind of right next to LA Dodgers, uh, that clubhouse store, is a unannounced under construction retail concept. And also right across from there, kind of next to the restrooms on the right hand side of City Walk, is another unannounced retail concept. Uh, they both differ in size, but uh, we will stay watching these until they are announced. Before going to the front, you can see the studio store starts to have some Grinchmas merchandise. And it's not just Grinchmas too. Going into the Wizarding World of Harry Potter section off to the left, not only is the Wizarding World holiday merchandise like stocking stuffers and uh, ornaments, it also snows inside of the store, which is pretty incredible. Now, the snow happens every so often, and it happens right above the retail checkout counter in the Wizarding World section, kind of right over here. Now, heading towards the park, you can see Mario Lopez was filming. And uh, crowds actually weren't awful for a holiday-esque day, a Thursday in the parks. Ironically, over the past couple weeks, the most popular attraction has not been the newest one, Jurassic World The Ride. It's been The Simpsons Ride, and today that was no exception. Uh, once heading into the park through the arch, you can see that this opening plaza has a, a lot of decorations. It really looks stunning. Universal does a great job for holidays. Now, we couldn't head into the park until 10 a.m. when it opened. And uh, so I just decided to go into the studio store to see what it looked like, to see some of the holiday decor. So you can see most of the holiday decorations are just that. It's just decorations. It's not any new merchandise other than maybe some ornaments and stock and stuffers. And maybe this will change over holiday times. But it's really just putting trees and garland up over existing merchandise. Which is fine. I, I understand the holidays don't start for another week. But I did expect just a little bit more. You can see the crowds uh, starting to form here. I decided to go into Starbucks to get a better look at New York Street. Which had uh, a lot of snow on it. But if you've ever been to Disneyland, these uh, rope drop crowds look like nothing. This would be the rope drop going into... Tomorrowland. So looking further into New York Street, you can see this snowman sitting on a bench. Now the entire day I was in the park, I didn't see one person posing with a photo with the snowman. Uh, so lonely, it's so sad. Anyway, looking into the merchandise store just a little bit more, you can see that there are some ornaments and snow globes, but as far as I know, all of these are available year-round. So I'm not quite sure that they had put out all of the holiday merchandise yet. Now, this is what the rope drop looks like. It's pretty crazy, and this is a lot of people, and they're all going to one of two places. One is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, and the other is the Simpsons ride. 
they can't go to uh, Jurassic World because the lower lot didn't open till 11. But most people went to Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. And you'll see something a little bit weird when we look at wait times in a little bit. Anyway, instead of going with the crowds, I decided to go in the opposite direction. So they were going straight, I decided to go left. So here you can see a little bit of the Grinch misconstruction in the plaza. But really I was going this way to look at the Secret Life of Pets off the leech dark ride attraction and some of the construction. So they actually took down the scrim in the front of the attraction to reveal the facades, which no shocker here match the facades on the side nearest Despicable Me that we'll look at. Here you can actually see somebody inside of the windows in the attraction, which can give you a sense of the scale of these windows. They are actually putting some so show scenes into the windows, like lamps or a shower curtain, to give you a little bit of a glimpse into what is in these buildings. But so much has happened over just the last couple months, and I can't wait to board this attraction next year. Now, it hasn't been announced yet where the entrance of this attraction will be, but my guess is it's going to be where those construction workers are standing right now towards the middle of the frame with that big arch. That seems like it would be a great spot for a marquee to say the name of the attraction, and it definitely draws people in. Now, looking down Baker Street just a little bit, on the other side is the Parisian Courtyard, which is finally reopened from Holiday Holidays in Hell, I think was the name of the maze, and that was during Halloween Horror Nights. The entire maze took up the entirety of this courtyard, and if you're ever looking for a quiet spot in the parks just to sit down and get away from the Wizarding World noise, come in here, it's really relaxing. Now we are back on the side of the Secret Life of Pets attraction. And you can see that they are adding some show scenes here as well. If you look at the bottom left corner, uh, right here, it's actually towards the center of the frame. You can see a lamp and a desk. Above that to the right, you can see a shower curtain. One thing that's interesting to note here is the force perspective. Uh, while there are five sets of windows on the orange building. The beige building only has four uh, going up the height. So there is a little bit of a difference in the force perspective here. And I'm sure from the front, no one's even gonna notice. Even from the side, it's hard to notice. Uh, but it's interesting seeing these two right next to each other and having them be such at a different scale. Here you can start to see some of the holiday decor on the Despicable Me Minion Way Street and the Despicable Me Minion Mayhem attraction. The Minions have some Santa hats on, which is pretty cool. Universal does holidays right. They really do. Now, before going down the street, I wanted to get a little bit of a look at the lower lot construction. So right now, I'm at the smoking area, which is to the right of the entrance of Super Silly Funland. And Wow. I mean, there's not much to say other than wow. So much has happened. Now, the main show building, which is rumored to be the Mario Kart attraction, hasn't really had much visible change over the last couple weeks, other than uh, on the right side seeing that third level come up. Most of the change has come on the far left side of the rumored Mario Land, Super Mario Land. Now this is rumored to be a Mushroom Kingdom area, or even Peach's Castle. But we'll get a better look at that when we head to the lower lot and look at it from the escalators in our usual spot. You can see some bulldozers on the ground. Now, heading away from Super Silly Funland and looking down this beautiful street, you can see some holiday decor on the right and left sides and also above the street in the form of lights. Here's a better look at the Grinch Mystery from earlier and the Hula Days set. 
Um, just for some... Now, for a point of reference, there is Super Silly Funland far in the back. Cocina Mexicana in front of us, the new restaurant that opened. The DreamWorks Theater, which is to the left with Kung Fu Panda. And, of course, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. There would be no way to do a holidays construction update without coming in and taking a look at the merchandise, the decorations, and even some hot butter beer. Looks like the train's running on time. The Wizarding World does it right. It's absolutely stunning. If you want some uh, access to holiday ornaments and other merchandise items, you can head into the Globus Mundi shop, which is to the right. Uh, it's themed to platform nine and three quarters. Has some ornaments and some stockings. You can see some of the garland that's been put up. Now, I do believe that there will be more put up by the beginning of holidays next week, but it still looks absolutely stunning. Now, if you do want hot butter beer, you can head into the Three Broomsticks, which is uh, right on the left there, and it tastes so good. And this is actually what Harry, Ron, and Hermione drink in the actual film. They don't have cold butter beer, they have hot butter beer. Because why would you have a cold beverage in a snowy village? And it, it does taste very good. It's like a milky latte. Um, I did need to head out of the park because I, I was seeing a movie. Ironically, a Disney movie at Universal. Um, I'm not going to say what it is other than I, I really just I need to let it go. Anyway, heading into the feature presentation shop, which is back at... Uh, back theme to The Wizarding World of Harry Potter, there was some Christmas merch. Looks like they were making some progress on that tree. Now I'm headed back in after the seeing the film. It was fantastic. Felt like I was lost in the woods there. Here's a closer look inside the animation studio store and some of the decor. And like earlier, I, I said there is some decor, but most of the theming in the shops is just putting up trees and garland around existing merchandise. But there was a Grinchmas section, and right uh, on the other side of the Grinchmas section was this dragon from How to Train Your Dragon. Now, I've never seen that movie, but there's a dragon. Now, let's take a better look at the wait time. So this is uh, towards the middle of the afternoon, so wait time should be bad. And as predicted, the longest wait in the park was the Simpsons ride, tied with Ollivander's at 35 minutes. But Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey was only 10 minutes. Jurassic World the ride was closed for most of the day and the lower lot rides um, had under 30 minute waits. Everything was pretty fantastic. The park was pretty dead. Uh, usually at this park you don't have waits longer than an hour unless it's Christmas or middle of the summer. The wait times were really not bad. Most things were a walk on. Now I mentioned the Simpsons ride had the longest wait in the park which is ironic because the area of Springfield had no holiday decor at all. Now, this might be added before holidays start in a week, but the only decor in the area was on the sign to the lower lot. So let's go to the lower lot and let's get a better look at the construction going on there. It was a beautiful clear day in the valley. We had some rains earlier in the week which washed out a lot of the smog and pollution, which was nice. It looks like they got rid of the uh, cat advertisements for the cat movie coming out later this year. Now, that lower lot construction, it's, it's really coming along as we saw earlier. Here you can see a better view at the rumored Mushroom Kingdom area, and you can see the scale of the crane, which is bringing things up to the Mario Kart attraction in that third level off to the right by Transformers. We will get a, a closer look at it in a little bit. But I do want to show the fencing and the tent that is still around from uh, the Killer Clowns Maze and Halloween Horror Nights. It hasn't really gone anywhere. Now, I'm sure all of the props from inside are gone, but the tent and the fencing outside is still there. Heading down the escalator just a little bit, you can see the building kind of hiding behind the Jurassic Cafe and behind the Panda Express. Now, Jurassic World the Ride was closed, but I do want to point out that the Jurassic World sign was taken down 
just about a month ago. Not sure why, I'm sure it was just for refurbishments, but it does look a little weird having a brand new attraction that just opened less than six months ago not have its name on it. You can see the water is so calm without boats running. They did have a big Christmas tree in the lower lot. Now looking uh, at Jurassic World, you can see how striking not having a sign there is. And going down a little bit, you can see that a lot of the holiday lights that are up, and we'll look at a little bit closer at this in a second, are actually from the Stranger Things Starcourt Mall and the Scoops location from Halloween Horror Nights. All of these lights, I, I'm sure Universal figured it would do double duty for Halloween and holidays, but they are all, uh, they, they appear to be the same lights that were there from Halloween Horror Nights. Megatron came out. He is such a great character. But you can see above him some brand new artwork that uh, has come up to advertise new NBC shows. Now looking to the left of Transformers is where we can get the closest look at the rumored Mario Kart attraction. And I, I, I don't know how well your eye is, but it's very difficult to see into the attraction to be able to see what's going on um, it does appear, though, that there are a lot more hanging items from the ceiling than last time I checked. Not quite sure what they are. I'm not into construction. I'm not an architect. Uh, I, I don't think it is wiring. I don't think they're at that phase yet. Now, heading out of the lower lot, I saw the Stegosaurus. I think it has a name. I forget what it is. Um, and that was roaming around the Jurassic World section of the park. This is Universal at its finest. It looks so incredible, and uh, Universal doesn't have characters like Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse that people wait in lines to meet, but they do stuff like this. Um, coming back up, you can see Simpsons Ride is now at 45 minutes. My guess, the reason why it must be so long is they must only have one theater open. Usually they have both, but... They must have only had one. Now, uh, heading up to the upper lot and leaving the park, this was a fantastic visit. We got to look at a lot of construction. I got to see a fantastic movie. Got to ride some attractions. I didn't show it, but I did Transformers and The Mummy. Um, and looked at some of the holiday decorations because the holidays are starting now. Christmas begins next week at Universal. And uh, it, it just looks fantastic. Universal does holidays right. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, we'll come back again. Thanks so much.